So in this video, we are going to discuss the uh, question in thermal physics, which appeared in IIT JAM 2013 examination. So here we are going to discuss both MCQ as well as the descriptive type questions. Okay. So let's continue with question one. The statement is a black body at temperature T emits radiation at wavelength lambda. So let's say that uh, T1 is equal to T and the corresponding uh, emission wavelength that is lambda here okay so that's the first situation okay if the temperature of the black body becomes 40 so th so that means now the temperature of the black body it is becoming 40 we, we call this as t2 the new peak wavelength is so so that means we have to determine what is lambda 2 equal to okay so this problem can be solved by making making use of wind's displacement law wind's displacement law which says that the product of the wavelength at which the maximum emission occurs that's that we call as the lambda m and multiply by the corresponding temperature that is equal to constant okay so that means for two given situation lambda 1 t1 that should be equal to lambda 2 t2 so we have to find what is lambda 2 so from here lambda 2 will be lambda 1 multiply by t1 upon t2 okay and uh, what is lambda 1 this is lambda here so what is t uh, t1 it's t so t divided by t2 which is 40 okay and then multiply by lambda 1 which is lambda okay so th that is equal to lambda by 4 so therefore d is the correct option here now let's continue with the next question the statement is let nm be nbe and nfd denote the number of ways in which two particles can be distributed in two energy states according to maxwell boltzmann bose einstein and fermi dirac statistics respectively okay so we are given a situation where uh, two particles so we are having n is equal to two objects here okay so these can be uh, distributed in two different energy levels so let, let's continue with the first case when we treat the particles as maxwell boltzmann distribution or maxwell boltzmann stat you can say distribution okay so here in this case particular case we treat the particle as distinguishable okay so we have to distribute these two particles in two different energy states okay so the corresponding uh, microstates i'm going to draw here okay because the particles are distinguishable so i can label them as a and b a and b so the one particle in the lower energy state and the other one in the upper one and now interchange the particles so that will give you a different microstate okay so therefore this implies the number of ways for this particular case that's nmb maxwell boltzmann statistics that is equal to 4 here okay now the second case when we treat the particle as bose boson so that mean bose einstein stat so that mean when particle they are obeying bose einstein statistics so that mean here the particle will be treated as identical and then no constraint on the occupancy of a particular state no constraint on occupancy of a particular state okay so in this case again we will have two different energy levels here okay and then let's see how many uh, uh, different arrangements are feasible so because particles are uh, treated as identical so here so when we interchange again we will get the same microstate so that's not going to be a di uh, different microstate here okay now in another case both the particles could be in the ground state or they could be in the excited state okay so this implies when we treat the particle as uh, bos uh, bosonic particles so then the possible number of ways are three okay now let's try to understand the third case okay so when we treat the particle as fermion, uh, fermion okay so third case is when particles away from me direct 
statistics okay so in this case poly ex poly exclusion principle poly exclusion principle will limit the occupancy in a particular energy state okay so which says that no uh, a given energy state but single particle state cannot occupy more than one particle okay so let's see how many options are available so because the particles they are again they are treated as identical here also so we have only one single option here in the case of Fermi Dirac statistics okay so therefore the ratio which is asked in the question that is n maxwell woodsman n Bose Einstein is to NFD. So this is 4 is to 3 is to 1. So therefore, A is the correct option here. Let's continue with the next question. The statement is two thermally isolated identical system have heat capacities which varies as cv is equal to beta tq where beta is greater than zero so we are given two uh, different systems let's note these as two different system whose heat capacity vary in the same manner that's beta tq cv that is equal to beta tq for both system okay and beta is greater than zero now initially the one system is at 300 kelvin and another one is at 400 kelvin let's say t1 for this system this is 300 kelvin and corresponding temperature for the another system it is 400 kelvin okay the systems are then brought into thermal contact and the combined system is allowed to reach the final equilibrium so now what we are doing is we are combining these two system and making a common system okay so let's say that this is the common system okay because the heat capacity they were identical so for the common system again the heat capacity will, will follow the same uh, order okay but now let's say the final temperature of this common system is tf so which we have to determine okay so the final temperature of the combined system is what so that, that, that's our objective here okay so now if we just take a look at this problem the one of the system is at lower temperature and another system is at higher temperature so when we bring together these two systems the energy exchange will take takes place between these two system the energy which is lost by the system which is at higher temperature that is exactly equal to uh, the energy gained by the system at lower temperature and uh, i'm talking about the magnitude only okay so let's say that uh, when a composite system is formed then let tf be the final temperature so then the heat uh, if we say that delta q1 is the heat gained by system 1 let me call this as system 1 and this is system 2 so delta q1 is the magnitude of the heat which is gained by system 1 and delta q2 that's the magnitude of the heat which is gained by system which is lost by system 2 because it is at high temperature okay so then this delta q1 so i'm not taking care of the uh, the I mean the the sign uh, sign here okay so at the end i will uh, i will consider only the magnitude okay so that uh, we can compare the delta q1 and delta q2 and then we will have the final value of the temperature tf okay so delta q1 will be cb dt from t1 to tf okay the temperature changes for this system temperature change changes from t1 to tf for this uh, for this case it is t1 to tf and for this it is t2 to tf okay now this will be equal to cv dt but now for system 2 temperature is changing from t2 to tf here okay now we will substitute the value of cb which is given as beta t cube here so that means beta t cube dt from t1 to tf that will be equal to t2 to tf beta t cube dt okay so so that means uh, for the for the integral on the left hand side we obtain because beta these are the constants so they will cancel with each other so we are left with only uh, after doing the integration it will become uh, if you just uh, integrate t q dt so that will give you with from certain initial to final limit so that will give us t4 t uh, t, t4 
from some initial state to final state and divided by 4 okay so ultimately this will be tf4 minus ti4 divided by 4 so that's what i'm going to do here so for the integral on the left hand side i can write tf4 minus t14 divided by 4 this should be numerically equal to now i am interchanging the uh, the the limits okay because ultimately if i write, if i if uh, I, I write it like tf4 minus t2 4 so that will be a negative quantity but we have to simply think about the magnitude only so i am reverting uh, their position so i will write here t2 4 minus tf4 so this will simply make it a positive quantity quantity nothing else uh, will happen to the net magnitude okay so they will cancel with each other so after uh, solving this we obtain 2 times tf4 that is equal to t14 plus t24 which means tf will be or tf4 will be t14 plus t24 divided by 2 or you can say tf is equal to the belly of t1 which is 300 power 4 plus belly of T2 which is 400 Kelvin its power 4 divided by 2 and its uh, under root ok and if you solve this we obtained Tf is equal to 360.29 Kelvin so this is our answer so let's continue with the next question the statement is we are given a hollow cylinder which is closed at both ends with adiabatic walls is divided into n equal cells okay so uh, this is an adiabatic wall so this black boundary it's an adiabatic wall and it's closed on the both sides it's a cylinder okay uh, and then further it is divided into n equal cells which are labeled as c1 c2 c3 and so on up to the cn okay now using disc d1 d2 and dn minus 1 so so that means this entire cylinder is divided into n cells using disc d1 d2 and dn minus 1 where disc d1 is also adiabatic in nature so that's what i have uh, mentioned here okay and the remaining disc d2 d3 and so on up to uh, dn minus 1 they are uh, adia uh, sorry the diathermal in nature so that means they can conduct the heat okay now each cell contain one mole of an ideal monatomic gas so that means uh, cell each individual cell it is containing one mole of an ideal monatomic gas at temperature p naught v naught and t naught so that means in the beginning the pressure volume and temperature inside the each cell it is p naught v naught and t naught okay the gas in cell c1 which is the first cell is heated slowly until temperature of the gas in the cell cn reaches the final temperature 40 naught okay so that means when what we are doing is we are heating the gas in uh, cell c1 and uh, it's, it's given that the temperature in the uh, cell C n it's becoming 14 odd okay so that means it's uh, it's it's only possible because uh, this nth cell it's lying quite far away from the the first cell okay so the so that means the heat heat uh, or the energy might have uh, transferred from cell c2 to c3 and so because these are the uh, diathermal walls okay so that means whatever is the temperature here in the final state which we are calling as 40 naught same will be the temperature here 40 naught 40 naught here and 40 naught here and 40 naught here okay so what uh, we are going to do here is that we are going to apply the condition of adiabatic ex expansion here and then we will try to obtain the final result okay so that means we are having a situation some, uh, something like this so i can draw the situation uh, the given situation like this this is the uh, i will call this as initial state and this as the final state okay because in the beginning the temperature in each chamber was t naught and corresponding volume was v naught okay and i can divide the remaining uh, cells which are n minus 1 cells okay with temperature t naught it's in the situation in the in beginning okay and the corresponding volume is it's n minus 1 cells okay multiply by the volume of one single cell okay this is a situation before heating okay now the situation after heating it's a disc this one okay 
and the, here the uh, we are replacing all these C2 to Cn cells by a one single cell uh, which is having a temperature of 40 node and let's say this is the volume after heating okay so this is a situation after heating this is the final state and after heating okay so now uh, we will apply the, the the condition of adiabatic expansion here okay so that means t1 b1 power gamma minus 1 that is equal to t2 b2 power gamma minus 1 so for this chamber okay uh, the situation is in the, the initial situation is t1 is t uh, t naught what is b1 b1 is n minus 1 v naught okay so n minus 1 v naught and or power gamma minus 1 that is equal to the t2 which is 4 t naught and b2 power gamma minus 1 okay and here because it's a monatomic gas so for monatomic gas gamma is going to be 5 by 3 but that will uh, substitute uh, uh, after solving it so after rearranging the terms in this expression we obtain that b2 is equal to n minus 1 v naught upon 4 power 1 upon gamma minus 1 okay now substitute the value of gamma is equal to 5 by 3 here so we will obtain b2 is equal to n minus 1 v naught upon 4 power 3 by 2 or this is equal to n minus 1 v naught upon 2 power 3 and that's nothing but n minus 1 v naught upon 8 okay so we, uh, we have obtained b2 now in the next step we will determine the the final volume of the chamber 1 okay what is the what is the chamber 1 so we call this as chamber 1 okay so we want to determine the final volume of this one this chamber okay so final volume of chamber 1 that is given by c1 and that is equal to total volume which is n times v naught minus the final volume of chamber 2 which is b2 which we have just determined okay so n times v naught minus n minus 1 v naught divided by 8 and if you solve this so we will obtain that this is equal to 7 n plus 1 divided by 8 times v naught so this is the our answer